matter, a couple of years ago, machine learning was something uh, only specialists knew. It was some geeky topic, but now, somehow, it, it actually happened right now, it happened in 2015, I think, all the media started talking about it. We couldn't imagine that two years ago, that, for example, we'll have uh, two-hour-long late debates on BBC on how smart algorithms will change our lives. But now that's what happens. We have more and more publications about it, more and more thinking on how machine learning brought to our life is going to change it. And, well, you can see some bold statements about 70% of jobs being replaced, or probably the next one is one of the most interesting ones. So this geeky topic, only technological, deep technological people knew, is now something McKinsey is writing an executive guide to, right? And um, again, it's making kind of bold statements there, saying that human in the loop involvement in decision making becoming unpractical very rapidly, right? So why all this happens? And what exactly happens? In Harvard Business Review, they had it as a main topic for their June issue in this year. Well, that's probably because that's exactly what we are looking for. Uh, machine re learning revolution is not called revolution for, you know, for a joke. It is going to change our lives. So just look at this definition, right, about innovations of various kinds in different industries suddenly happening everywhere. But this description is not about today. It's actually a quote from a historical book on industrial revolution in Britain in the 18th century. And that's why we are now called what happens with machine learning industrial revolution, because it repeats very much what we've seen back then, when uh, many industries are transformed. And actually, lives of many people are transformed, because many mid uh, mid-class jobs are eliminated and some new jobs appear and so on. So that's something we are, we are expecting to happen now. But we, you may ask why we don't see it around already if it's such a huge change, such a huge thing. Well, because just as William Gibson said, the future is unevenly distributed, right? Of course, when revolution starts, it doesn't start immediately everywhere. There are some factors which would influence machine learning adoption and machine learning influence to different industries and different businesses. And um, these factors actually define how you will see these technologies adopted, how you will see it in your life, and also how do you need to think about adopting these technologies in your business. Yeah, that's one more quotation from this McKinsey executive guide. Just take a look at that. I almost missed it. You see what they say? They call machine learning a mainstream management tool. So it's supposed to be a mainstream already. Well, let's be honest here, it's not yet. But it's really very rapidly becoming true. So what are those factors which influence the adoption of machine learning? And in which industries will probably sit first, and which industries will be later? Well, first factor is quite an obvious one, so I don't stop on this for long. It's obviously amount of data you can use to train your machine learning algorithms. Um, also, I don't think this factor will stay important for long, because with this speed of creating data we have now, probably in 10 or 20 years, the data become commodity. But so far, well, it's still the issue. And that's why, for example, in banking, they enjoy using huge amounts of data because they basically had to store all this uh, source data being obliged by regulators as audit trail. And on the other hand, in agriculture, where you can also improve a lot using machine algorithms with data, it's called precision agriculture. The problem is for most of the previous years, they did not store the raw data for machine to analyze. They only store some analytical reports, so you cannot really work on that. It will change and change soon. But there is another factor that, that wants, and probably that's the most defining factor for machine learning adoption. It's a scale of executive economic actor. And that's why, for example, when we speak about self-driving cars, I personally believe uh, we'll start seeing self-driving cars, in fact, not cars, but trucks. Why? Oh, that's very easy. How do you evaluate the value of self-driving car, self personal car? How much would you personally pay for that? How much? Uh, uh, car producers are expecting to, to get out of it. That's not really clear. 
it's not really clear how, how much it's better for me to have this self-driving car. But for trucking industry, which is hundreds of billions only in the US and uh, even more, of course, globally, that's very, very clear. You can optimize your costs significantly, and that provides enough motivation for adoption of these technologies. And that's why I believe we will see self-driving trucks on our roads much earlier than we'll see massive of self-driving personal cars. But that's the same principle you would use in your business when you think about application of machine learning. You should start with the places where you expect the most economic effect most quickly. The next one is a more tricky one, and it doesn't change that fast because it has to do with our people's behavior. It's our ability to experiment. And I don't mean that, well, are we able to, to organize that? I'm just saying that situations are different. And when you apply machine learning technologies, you need to be able to experiment to prove that this predictive model, for example, works properly. But how do you do that? Well, you basically just put some new uh, predictive model into work. And that's where the problem is. Sometimes it's not acceptable. Well, for example, we had this client who wanted us to help them with our machine learning algorithm to improve their motivation system. Basically, how do you pay bonuses the way that these bonuses really make people to bring more money for your company, right? And it can be done. The data can be analyzed. The predictive model can be built, and it can be actually put into action. The only problem is you need to experiment, which basically means you take a slice of your staff, employees, randomly, and somehow you assign them a different motivation system. Well, doesn't exactly sound good. Most of the companies wouldn't do that, right? And that's why it's really hard to do. On the other hand, when it comes to recruitment in the same HR area, it works really well. You can build predictive model which will predict the probability of a particular person to be hired and stay with your company for longer, which can optimize your costs a lot. Another thing with the ability to experiment is money. Because, uh, and again, it explains why in many companies, uh, adoption of machine learning starts with marketing and sales, because that's where you can well, experiment easily, and also you can, uh, well, you don't risk much, right? What your experiment means is that you put some experimental campaign out there, and uh, the worst case scenario, okay, it wasn't efficient. It's just one small campaign. On the other hand, there is different story about predictive maintenance. You can use the same technologies to analyze the data generated from equipment and build predictive model which will predict equipment failures. And there is a big <laughs> temptation to use this prediction to optimize costs, right? For example, we have this predictive model which says that equipment is totally fine and you probably do not service it, uh, do not need to service it in the next years. But according to the protocols, you would do that once in three months. So you can save on those services. The problem is, sometimes these experiments are just too costly. If your equipment uh, costs $100 million and you do not service it according to the protocol, and your model is not accurate enough, which may happen, this experiment will, will show it, but it will cost you a million dollars. So probably not the best way, way to start. And last but not least, it's automated action. There is actually one of the big biggest obstacles to adoption of machine learning technologies into real business processes. And this, this obstacle is humans. Because people want to understand what happens. People want to know why. And when you provide people with some prediction or even prescription on how sh they should act to be most efficient, they do not tend to just you know, trust you on your work. And they're not happy with the idea, let's just experiment and do what machine says. Right? They want to have the explanation. Uh, the problem is, machine learning technologies, they actually do build these precise models, but they do not really explain. And even if they would explain, would try to explain, the explanation would be too long and complicated because that's exactly why these models can be that precise. They consider much more factors than any human can consider. So here's the problem. Well, for example, one of our colleagues who provide uh, sales lead scoring, uh, they, they have this problem. They provide very, very nice and neat solution. When you use your sales force, you use their, their solution as kind of a plugin, which rates your lead according to probability to make a deal. Well, that's great, right, for all the salespeople. 
Not exactly, because they ask why. They, they say, no, you know what? I think that it's better to call that guy, not this guy, machine recommend. On the other hand, when you can make an automated action, and here again we come to the example with marketing, because very, very easily in many cases it can be done. You can just send a letter or SMS or whatever. Well, in this case, machine, machine built uh, predictive model can provide you with the best results because you build a prediction, you act on it, you measure results, you retrain your model, you learn from this results basically, and you improve it all the time. So that's, that's probably the answer to the question how uh, machine learning technologies will be adopted in the world out there. And also that's the answer to the question how should you look into your business and how should you start adopting machine learning technologies if you haven't yet? Well, it's mainstream management tool, right? So what we think is going to happen is basically wherever all those four factors are in place, where we expect some significant economic effect, and this economic effect can be easily measured. When we have enough data to, to build our models on, when we can afford experimenting, and especially we can take automated action, well, all those places will be taken by robots and actually will improve our industries and our businesses and at the end of the day, probably our lives very much. That's what we believe in and that's uh, actually my advice to you to start looking in your business for those four points and if you have still have humans doing jobs like that, and you probably do, well, that's the time for you to adopt machine learning as a mainstream management tool. Thank you very much. I, I suppose you...